Hi everyone, my name is Amir and welcome to the Happiest Hour. So today we're at the pond with Pavel. So, can you introduce yourself, Pavel? Hi guys, so I'm Pavel. Uh, welcome to my humble venue called the pond. It's in the middle of Wan Chai in, uh, in an amazing uh, historical building. We have a great gin selection just behind us, but today I think we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna talk about something else. The, the brown gin. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought it would be nice to uh, a cool introduction to everyone, to uh, people out there who don't really have much experience with trying different variations. So we're going to start off with trying some uh, white rum, some flavoured, and then some spiced. So, yeah, how, how are you going to do that for? Way too long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so obviously you have experience with, uh, with rum. Yeah, bars. yeah, quite a, quite a few places actually. So uh, rum, rum is a big love of mine, even though I, I spend time in other venues as well. But you know, it started it started in London by working in Florida with uh, uh, Cuban musicians, with uh, people rolling cigars on a on a knee, and nice. um, yeah, live shows every day. That was, that was that was good time, and you know, that's how the love started. We had nearly four hundred different rums to, to choose from, and five podcasts. Uh, <laughs> Can go wrong with this, uh, and yes, yeah, straight there I started working in Mahiki, which was a brilliant tiki place, uh, also in London. And yeah, yeah, since then, you know, between rum places and not rum places, but it's been it's been well over ten years. <laughs> it's, <Yeah. even> that. <laughs> it's been a it's been a very long adventure. Yeah, rum 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 is one of the coolest categories I think, uh, as far as spirits yeah. goes, because because of the variety and, and and how many different styles and. Types of rum you can get. It's pretty much every single island has either yeah. a completely different style or a few different styles within that island. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can you can never get bored. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's uh, always seen as the next big category. I think the group kind of like take uh, take over the gym, but it's never happened. It's a bit of a shame because I feel like rum is a little bit underappreciated. Yeah, always a runner up. Yeah, yeah. But actually, I think in the UK last year, I think the rum sales out shown gin. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, but UK, UK should be a good market for rum, considering all the history behind it. Uh, yeah, true. I think this this should be the place where rum should be growing. There's more and more rums actually blended in the, in the UK. Yeah, even yeah. Though, so even though the juice is bought maybe abroad, yeah. Uh, the rum is blended in UK. I think yeah, this so is it's a good example, yeah. right? So the Demand's uh, fingers range is um, I think it's Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados, and then it's sent to the UK and it's blended with flavoring. So then the spiced coconut and then also one of the attractive. Yeah, I reckon this is this is one of the very interesting things about rum. So this whole idea of buying bulk and uh, yeah, not yeah. even distilling your own. So I think Trinidad and Tobago is probably the biggest exporter uh, around the world. So that's the that's the industry of distillery. Okay. And I think they make much more sales as well rather than to make an industry. And, and for a fact El Dorado is making much more. Yeah, no, last, no, yeah, last time we spoke about Eldorado. Rather, rather than making their own brand, yeah. which is actually a brilliant brand, if I have to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's, really yeah, it's, a, it's a really great brand. Uh, but yeah, they don't seem to be, be very caught up in, in promoting it. They, yeah. they, they, they actually more focused on selling both. But they make really good rum, and with the, the skills they have available. I don't know if we're going very advanced right now. We should maybe grow back and start, <laughs> start with something simple. So, rum is great. <laughs> Um, shall we shall we go through styles? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah? Let's start off maybe go through like the kind of like white. Yeah, let's go light. Let's, let's go light yeah. first. Yeah. And also, so obviously, it's quite early in the morning. It's at twelve o'clock, so we're just going to do a smell. Yeah, let's do a let's, let's, comparison, <laughs> let's smell test. Yeah, <laughs> bit too bit too early to get straight on the road. So yeah, so the first one we're going to try is the Chow Mein. So this one is from Thailand. It's one of your favorites, right? It actually is, yeah. It's a, it's a surprisingly great product made by uh, a brilliant French distiller in uh, in Thailand, and it's very much inspired by French way of making rum. So it's made of sugar cane juice uh, rather than molasses. Um, so it's got it's clean, grassy, and in this case, also cinnamon yeah, <laughs> <one that> nose. <laughs> But it's a, it's, a, it's a great product, uh, amazingly balanced, and it's going to work in a, in a French daiquiri uh, with, with lemon and replacing the lime, or it's, it's going to work in a frozen nuclear banana daiquiri. Yeah, yeah, really nice. <laughs> so obviously it has on the nose, it has those like vegetable notes, 
Oh yeah, very, very strong. Some like vanilla in there, so I think you can actually some banana in there, some chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It actually does really well. So if you if you think of what to what to compare it to in a in a world of rum, I would say probably French style rums from Martinique, yeah. like the Cox. Um, probably some of the better cachaça. So the ones that are made from sugar cane juice. Yeah. Um, it's not all the brands are there's no requirement to do so, but um, yeah, definitely one of the most interesting products on the, on the market here. And, um, like my little my little discovery because I completely did not see this coming and I, I tried it by complete accident and I was really really impressed. Oh, Actually, so yeah, 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 I was in a in a on a holiday in Phuket and a bartender offered me a drink of this. And I'm always happy to try local local stuff. I didn't really have any expectations because you, you can't really tell I didn't hear anything about this. And yeah, yeah I got the, I got a glass and it was brilliant. <laughs> so I've been I've been a big fan ever since. Yeah, yeah thanks. So in terms of production, when it comes to rum, you know you have different styles. So you have like some with sugar cane, or you have the molasses. So what what kind of style do you like the most? Do you have a uh, style of making cocktails? It's, it's it's difficult to say because it's like it's like asking what's your favorite food or what's your favorite song. Yeah, it sure, all depends yeah. on the uh, on the time of the day, on your mood, the time of the yep. year. Like you know, but sitting on the beach is going to be great for a frozen lucky, not necessarily for a for an old fashioned. Um, I think there's space for every rum, you know. There are there are rums that have been aged for over thirty years, like really heavy, yeah. like full bodied demeraras. Yeah. And if you're not very experienced taster, you might not use them with whiskey, right? Yeah. So this could happen. Um, this is this is on the very very other side of things. So this is very vegetal, fresh, grassy. Um, yeah, there's space for everything, in my opinion. It's it's, it's really important to, to sort of um, choose the right cocktail, the right rum. Yeah. Um, so you probably don't want to make an old fashioned with this. Well, you probably could. Yeah, you probably, probably could. Want, want something sweeter because old fashioned is inherently a uh, sweet drink. So yeah. you probably want some sweetness to ride it. Obviously, I think you you need something with a little bit more depth. Yeah. Yeah. You can make old fashioned with something which is like a white rum. You know, it's made from that. But yeah. you're shaking it with some citrus, so it's not more light, more vibrant. Yeah, absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, but this is this is where we have different rounds. We have a lot of versatility. We have different different sugar content. Yeah, this is a very yeah, interesting yeah, thing yeah. and probably very controversial because sugar is very controversial these days. Yeah, no, and that's something that you have about. to stay away, yeah. right? Yeah, no, well, I know it's like a bit of a you know, like unspoken thing about adding sugar into the group. Yeah, or caramel. So yeah, you want to go really hard, or should we just skip? <laughs> Well, we can, we can we can mention that a lot of rum tend to add some sweetener yeah. after distillation. Um, That's what seems to be the in there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of people seem to be frowning upon that. Yeah, but you have to realize that probably between eighty and ninety percent of rum has added sweetener, and I don't think it's necessarily bad. I think it's part of the tradition. I don't think it's wrong. Um, it's your choice. You can you can you can still find rum with added sugar. So again. It's Probably your best choice would be the French style rounds. Yeah. They definitely stay away from sugar. It's a very, very different type of profile. Um, but if you, if you drink major, major label stuff like Eldorado, Zacapa, you know, Foundation, Relicario, you name yeah. it, they all have diplomatic, but they all have some sort of added sweetener. Whether it's sugar or honey or something else, or agave sometimes, it depends where you are. So it's Okay, so, so we move on to maybe trying this white shrimp. Yeah, why not? And I'll go to like the coffee and we're going to talk a bit more about like shrimp, David rooms, and that's crazy. So, inside, yeah, magic of TV. <laughs> so, the next one, uh, according to Dean, is from Portugal. <laughs> we'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my lava, so this is that spice shrimp from Fiji. So for me, it has like nice uh, citrus, cinnamon on the nose. Well, actually, we mentioned before about spiked rum. I think it kind of like inherently comes from all the rum which used to get transported on the ships, and then obviously it turns out like the spice roots and the spice trade, and also just uh, like coexisting and blending spices into rum. Yeah. I I think, yeah, I'm sure this is one part. The other side is uh, if you're living on the island and you're producing this rum, maybe it's not the best product. Yeah, it's quite true. crude, then maybe you need to 
boost it up with a bit of sweetness and a bit of uh, spices. So, you know, I, I think this is where the tradition of, of sugar and spice rum comes from. Uh, I think it's very interesting to, to actually go visit the distilleries, go visit the places where the rum is made and try to see how people who live in the area are making their own spiced rum because all those guys, they obviously buy bulk straight from the distillery yeah. and they make their own concoctions at home. Yeah, I tried one of those in uh, St. Lucia. That was very interesting. Yeah, so St. Lucia has quite a big uh, history, right? So they have 10, uh, 10 Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's quite a few. There's only one distillery, you know, surprisingly. Oh, really? Yeah, there's only one distiller in St. Lucia, and uh, one of the rums that supposedly is made there is not really made in that distillery. <laughs> there's no other ones on the island, so who knows. But this is this is a good segment to actually touch on another thing. The reason I like rum is, um, well, one of the reasons, is uh, is also the fact that there's still a bit uh, rebels slash pirates, privateers. You cannot entirely trust what's on the bottle yeah. in certain cases. Uh, you need to have a little bit of in-depth knowledge to, 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 to be able to actually tell whether the rum is made on the island it claims to be made. Uh, so there are there are little little kind of uh, interesting techniques uh, like calling a rum 50 anniversario yeah. with a huge 50 on the bottle. That usually means uh, it's the 50th anniversary of something and the rum is not 50 <laughs> years old. But you know, it works. It seems to be working on a lot of people. Yeah, because I know it's with uh, Papa, you mentioned it's a ton of wheel, but it's a uh, solera. It's a solera, but then again, you know, if so you think about it, it's not necessarily a negative thing. Yeah. It's a really positive feeling, it's solera too. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. So, yeah, there are, there, are, there are ways of doing it. Obviously, it doesn't mean it's 23 years old, but once you, once you, once you get over this, I, I think you know, it's, a, it's still a very interesting product. Yeah, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of little traps, and also depending on... Uh, the island and, uh, and the countries and the legal system, they will obviously have different rules. Yeah. And you cannot have one unified system of rules because there's too many countries involved and it's, it's completely impossible. So that's why it's a very interesting category and uh, it's still something you can find your things, there's still a lot happening and it's very vibrant. The people behind it, are, or at least the ones I met, uh, are really, really interesting characters. Um, it's also, there's something, there's something tropical, something exotic about drums, and it's, 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 it's something that's connected with, uh, with the entire Tiki culture, so the, the idea of escape from reality, yeah. the idea of not remembering about your everyday uh, worries and trouble, and, and just, you know, uh, phasing out into, into the rum oblivion. <laughs> yeah, but last time we spoke about like, Tiki dreams and the Tiki culture, I know we you know, touched upon like, the, you know, like, so we, you know, um, yeah. cocktails with too much fruit juice and that kind of thing, which is a negative thing on Tiki drinks. Well, it seems it happened in the 70s, 80s. Yeah. I think Tiki culture became uh, somewhat of a bastardized version of itself. Yeah. Um, I think the issue was the fact that all the, all the iconic people standing behind the, the, the best rum cocktails and the best rum places in, in Tiki culture, so they, they were not very happy to share their knowledge and their recipe. So, uh, so Don, Don Beach, yeah, yeah, Don Beach would go through lengths to, to, to make sure not no, 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 no bartender yeah, knew yeah, his yeah. recipe. So just he like would number and, and letters, letters. Yeah. yeah, just just letters and numbers on the bottles. Uh, so nobody nobody could copy his recipe. So so therefore, at some point, when this became a trend and started actually bringing good good profits, people knew how to do it from the outside. So they could be statues, they could build the massive places where you know there was a lot of art and so on and so on, but they couldn't make the drinks. Yeah. So the drinks became worse and worse while the establishments were growing and then the, the culture became really bastardized and then almost died in the eighties. But thank God for my EQ we brought it back. <laughs> uh, well not myself I, I started working there a few, a few years after this happened but I think as a venue as, as a venue those guys definitely brought uh, Tiki back in the in the spotlight. Having uh, really interesting guests in the venue, yeah. all the celebrities want to be there when, when they open in London. Our royal family was having a bash there every every week, so yeah, it's yeah. some zombies. Good times, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of treasure chests. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was that was the thing in my making. Yeah, my my first ever bar job was in a tiki bar as well. So you, you end up finishing the shift like sticking the cinnamon because of all the zombies. Yeah, then you had a counter, a zombie counter. 